The Free Britney movement was key in bringing attention to yet another system in the United States that's broken. But Britney Spears is not the only person in a conservatorship, and she is definitely not the only person in an abusive conservatorship, or an unconstitutional conservatorship. Lizzie Harding, who was once an ICU nurse, who is a mother, is in an unconstitutional conservatorship, started by her husband after she found out he was a pedophile and tried to divorce him. What better way to shut her up than put her into a conservatorship? She has a hearing tomorrow. If I can get the name of the courthouse, I'll put it here before I post it. If not, I'll put it down in the description. But please share the hashtag Free Lizzie Harding. There's also a petition in my bio that you can check out. You can sign it. Please share it with your friends. Share it on Facebook. It's super important that we help Lizzie get free. So please share the hashtag Free Lizzie Harding so that we can free Lizzie Harding. Conservatorships have been in the press a lot lately, but you, like a lot of people, might be wondering, what are they? I'm gonna break this down really simply for you by using a very common example. Let's say your grandmother or grandfather got dementia and they reached a point where they were no longer able to take care of themselves. Should they be able to enter into contracts when they don't really understand what's actually going on? Should they be able to put their house on the market? Should they be able to go grocery shopping when they're no longer capable of driving? Probably not. This is when someone can go to the probate court system and petition to have your grandmother or grandfather put into a conservatorship. Now that they're in a conservatorship, all of their human rights are assigned to their conservator. Most states actually call these adult guardianships and their conservator would just be their guardian. This means they do not get to pick their own lawyer. They do not get to pick their own doctor. They don't even get to pick what they eat. All of their human rights are now assigned to someone else. So that would mean if I was your grandmother's conservator, I would be able to choose where she lives, I'd be able to sell her house, I'd be able to do anything I wanted, sell her car, buy a car, all of that. Um, they say everything has to be approved through the courts, which makes it seem really up and up, but the problem is, a lot of times the courts will just approve anything and everything, or the conservator won't actually get approval, and then the judge doesn't do anything to them for it. Nationwide, there has been a major issue of conservators actually getting the court's approval to sign over the conservatee's estate to them. Meaning, if I was your grandmother's conservator and she had a $10 million estate, I could get the court's approval to sign that estate over to me. This isn't something that happens all the time, but it does happen really commonly. Conservatorships are meant to help people. They really are. Because when you really think about, you know, your grandma with dementia, you don't want her entering into contracts and doing all that crazy kind of stuff because it wouldn't be right for her to be able to do that. The issue arises whenever the conservator is not a good person, whenever they don't have good intentions at heart, as we saw with Britney Spears. So if you're struggling to understand what a conservatorship is, just think of it as the reassignment of every human right somebody has offered by this country, assigned to another person who now makes all of their decisions. They can have you put into a psych ward if they want indefinitely. I mean, they can really do anything to you. They are now legally you. Legally speaking, contractually speaking, financially speaking, the conservator is now you. If this sounds as messed up to you as it does to me, you can join the fight to end conservatorships. There is a better way to do this. Someone should not lose every human right they have just because they're no longer able to take care of themselves. Especially being that that's not the only reason you can be put into a conservatorship. There's a plethora of reasons. Follow for more. Nichelle Nichols was the first black woman to play a leading role in an American television series. She was Lieutenant Uhura on Star Trek. Nichelle paved the way for black actresses in this country, but not just actresses, creators of all types, writers, directors, producers, all of them. She showed these networks and these entertainment companies that this country had a craving to see black people in TV, represented as normal everyday people, as the heroes of the stories, not just the maid. And I imagine she went through hell to do it. Instead of being able to reap the rewards of her career in her old age, just like Britney Spears, she is now in an unconstitutional conservatorship. Her son, Kyle Johnson, put her into a conservatorship and since then has locked her away in a house in New Mexico where she is unable to see or communicate with any of her loved ones. She's being fed a steady diet of fast food despite the fact that she's in, I believe, her late 80s. Her estate planning explicitly stated that she wanted to die in her home in LA and that once she was dead, her son would get everything. 
but he couldn't wait. He wanted it early. So, with the court's help, actually the same exact court that put Britney into a conservatorship, they put her into one. Her son even went as far as to sell her LA home without any approval from the court, something that they are supposed to get approval for. When this was brought up to the court by Angelique Fawcett, someone I highly recommend you follow, she is one of the only people out there actually fighting for Nichelle. When she brought it up in recent court documents on the January 10th hearing, the judge did absolutely nothing. They didn't care that he sold her home under value without any permission from the court. They didn't care that there is a video of him assaulting her, his own mother. They didn't care. They didn't care that receipts show that she's being fed fast food instead of regular healthy food. They didn't care that she's being isolated from everyone that she knows and loves. That is why we need regular, everyday people to share the hashtag free Nichelle Nichols to share her story, just like we did with Britney Spears, so that we can free her. I know a lot of people feel like this is futile because she's older, and older people oftentimes get put into conservatorships anyway, but there is a better way to do this. This could happen to you. This could happen to your family members. It could be your grandmother next. So if we don't fight whenever it happens to everybody then we allow it to happen to ourselves. Someone shouldn't lose every single constitutional right they are given by this government just because they're older. So please join the fight to free Nichelle Nichols, share her story, share the hashtag, do your research, check out Angelique. I've got a few videos on my YouTube channel if you're interested in checking them out. I have it linked on my profile. As always, thank you guys for watching and please do the right thing. Hi everyone, Lizzie Harding, a woman in an unconstitutional conservatorship, reached out to me on Instagram to help share her story. She found out her husband was a pedophile, and his response was to use his leeway as a lawyer to lock her into an unconstitutional conservatorship and steal her estate. The estate that she had built up for years of being a frontline worker, an ICU nurse. She currently has a petition going on change.org to get out of this conservatorship, so please sign it. The link will be right here. It will also be in my bio. I will also link a YouTube video I have of her telling her story unedited where you can listen to it from her own mouth and hear exactly the nightmare that she has gone through at the hands of this man. We have the opportunity to help someone in a conservatorship, so please do just that. Sign the petition, check out the video, and use the hashtag FreeLizzieHarding. Peter Max is an incredible pop artist who's done some incredible pieces like this one right here. In his youth, his family came to America, fleeing Germany to escape persecution. His story is so inspiring. It's the kind of story you read about in history books. It's the kind of stories that you tell your children to show them how amazing the American dream can really be and to show people that people come from all over the world to experience that dream. Unfortunately, in his old age, the American dream has turned into the American nightmare because of the probate court system. The same exact court system that roped Britney into a conservatorship. Britney Spears is not the only victim of the United States' corrupt court systems. Peter Max is now locked away from his family, his pets have been taken away from him, he is only allowed one hour-long visit a week with his daughter that is supervised. He is no longer allowed to paint. Yes, a painter, someone whose career was made off of painting, he is not allowed to paint anymore. Why, you might ask? Because a private fiduciary, meaning his conservator or legal guardian, but private, meaning not related to him, they do this as a business. It's how they make money. Because this person will not allow him to paint. When you're in a conservatorship, you no longer are allowed to have any choices for yourself. Where you live, who you see, if you have a phone, what you're allowed to eat, if you're allowed to go to a doctor, when you can go to a doctor, and who your doctor is. A conservator is even allowed to know what's going on. If they request to be in the room when you're with your doctor or psychiatrist, guess what? They have to let them be in the room. His private fiduciary is draining his estate. All of the money that he made over the course of his career is going into his conservator's pocket. His daughter, Libra Max, is currently leading the fight to free Peter Max. Please follow her on Instagram. Oh, and Twitter. It's just a very simple at Libra Max. She is an amazing person, and she is out there every day. She actually has the same exact lawyer Brittany does, Matthew Rosengart, so we're hoping that good things will come of this. Please share Peter's story and share the hashtag FreePeterMax so that we can get him out of this situation.
As I've said before, and I will continue to always say, I understand that whenever people reach a certain point, whenever they have dementia or Alzheimer's, steps have to be taken to keep them safe. But taking away 100% of someone's human rights is not the way it should go. In a conservatorship, you have fewer human rights than you would have if you killed your entire family in cold blood. You could kill everybody you know even, and you would have more rights than you would if you are in a conservatorship, and that is ridiculous. Call your legislators, sign petitions, follow Free Peter Max, and share it everywhere. If we don't help those in need, then when we are in need, we don't deserve help. As always, thank you guys for watching. Love you. Bye. How can someone be put into an abusive conservatorship whenever conservatorships are approved through the United States court system? Great question. Let's get into it. I know I reworded it a little bit, but essentially that's what you're asking, right? There's a really simple answer to this. Probate courts are overworked. There aren't enough judges to take on as many cases as there are. Think about how many people are in the United States. Over 300 million people. Now think about how many people you know personally have had to go to court for something versus how many people are judges. They are loaded down oftentimes with hundreds of cases and they don't have enough time to devote the, what they, the time that they really should be devoting to these individual cases to really have a full, well-rounded view of what these people's experiences are and what their problems are. But it goes much deeper than that. So there is a way that somebody explain to me that judges can be paid off. I'm not saying that anyone specific is doing this, but I am saying it is a possibility. Let's say I want to put you into a conservatorship and I need a judge to approve that. I can find the network of people who work in conservatorships. So doctors that do conservatorship evaluations, probate judges that commonly approve conservatorships, lawyers that fight for the people who are putting other people in conservatorships. There is a network of people, nursing homes that take new people who are in conservatorships. It is a network of doctors, lawyers, judges, anyone you can think of, police officers, I can approach a specific courthouse so that I can get a specific set of judges and then approach that judge to let them know that they can take out a $50,000 bank loan and I will pay that bank loan off for them. Or I will take out a $50,000 bank loan and then give the money to them and then pay off the bank loan myself. This way, it's not traceable. You don't know that that judge made that money from me. And then what the judge does is they approve me signing over parts of this person's assets into my name so that I have the money to pay off the loan. So the conservatee is who's actually paying. The person you're putting into a conservatorship is the person paying for all of this. But it looks like the judge took out a bank loan and paid for it, or it looks like I took out a loan and I paid for it from the wages I'm making from an honest job. It goes so much deeper than this, though. There is a network of doctors and uh, people who take care of elderly people, like in nursing homes, that will go to private fiduciaries, people that make being a conservator their business. They will go to them and let them know the people who are vulnerable, the people who would easily you would easily be able to put into a conservatorship. If you haven't already seen the movie I Care A Lot on Netflix, I recommend watching it. It's basically like revenge porn, but other than that, it's super accurate. The judges don't care. I'm not saying all judges are like this, but we have to wake up, man.